In a futuristic Germany, there's a company called Aeon that's changing the game. They've got this procedure. It's like a time trade. You give up years of your life and someone else gets them. It's a hot deal for folks strapped for cash, aging fast to fill their pockets, while the rich buy youth and practically live forever. Most sellers are the poor, desperate to catch a break, thinking they're making a choice, a donation. Migrants and asylum seekers, they're lining up for this. It's their shot at a decent life. Aeon plays it smart, even hooking up big names and noble folks with extra time. Max, Aeon's top dog in selling these age deals is out there hustling. Today, he's working his charm on a migrant kid, selling him the dream of shedding 15 years for cash. He's been there, done that, sold five years for college. He's all, your family's got no shot at papers, but this cash, it's your golden ticket to a business. Max's smooth talk lands the deal. Back at Aeon HQ, Max suits up in a raincoat. Gotta dodge those protesters hating on Aeon for widening the rich poor gap. Inside, it's celebration time. Max bags the best agent award. And Sophie Thyssen, the big boss, is all about how great they're doing. But not everyone's buying it. Over at an Aeon clinic, chaos erupts. Some dude disguised as a staff member goes wild with a gun, tagging the place with an A before bolting. He's from Adam Group these anti-Aeon radicals set on tearing the company down. Meanwhile, Sophie's watching a threatening video from Adam's boss, Lilith. She's promising all sorts of hell. Max heads home, cooks up a feast for him and Elena to toast his win. They're dreaming big, a family, a full life, even though they're still paying off their place. Next day, visiting Elena's folks, her dad's dropping hints about buying time. But there's his vibe, he's not cool with Max's gig. Elena cuts off the tension, but on the ride back, Max is wishing she'd have his back more. They get home, and bam, their apartment's up in flames. Everything's gone, including their savings stashed at home. Insurance? No help. They're saying it's their fault. Some candle business. Elena's sure she's careful, but that's the story, and they're stuck. It gets worse. To secure a loan, Elena's pledged 40 years of her life, news to Max but tries to swap in years, but no dice. No match since his last recipient kicked the bucket. Then, out of nowhere, cops snap Elena, thinking she might bolt from the country. Max, desperate, pleads his case to Sophie, who's like, I'll see what I can do. Meanwhile, Sophie's got her other fish to fry, shareholders gripping out the DNA match hassle, how it's costing them and limiting who can buy time. Max's world's upside down, losing everything, his wife in cuffs, and Aeon's ethics in question. He's got to figure a way out, fast. Sophie, the head of Aeon, is under fire for being too biased. Days later, Max's lawyer hits him with bad news. Sophie's ghosting them, not picking up calls. Desperate, Max heads to the clinic to see Elena, but they block him, saying she's in the middle of the procedure. Frustrated, he tries busting into other rooms, only to get tackled by Kaya and her squad. Elena, strapped in for the time transfer, freaks out hearing the contract. She fights back, but they knock her out with a shot and hook her up. 38 years of her life gets siphoned off to some mystery person. Max takes her home, but she's silent, shutting down. Days pass, and Elena's aging fast. She can't stand her reflection, turning old before her time. Things between her and Max go cold. He's trying to be there for her, but she's pushing away, lost in her own world. Then, a twist. Max gets bumped up at Aeon. A big race. But what's the point now? He storms to confront Sophie, but Kai is blocking him. Sophie just walks away, looking suspiciously younger. Max tries to show Elena love back home, but she's not buying it, thinking it's just pity. Things hit rock bottom when Elena, feeling a sharp pain, finds out she's bleeding. Max, out for a beer, gets hit by some girl selling illegal drugs. He brushes her off, but back at the hospital, they drop a bombshell. Elena was pregnant. The procedure cost him his carriage. Her old body couldn't handle a baby. Broken, Elena moves in with her folks. Max vows to fix things, but her dad's throwing shade, blaming him for the mess. Desperate, Max tracks down the drug girl in the park, pressing her for leads. 
she points him to an underground group in Lithuania doing shady age reversal surgeries. Max gears up, grabbing a burner phone and fake passports, planning to snatch Sophie. But she's got to be linked to this somehow. He trails her, waits for his moment, and ambushes her in the cemetery, making it look like Adam Group's work. He scoops up Elena from work, begging her to trust him. They hide out in an abandoned building with Sophie tied up, but Elena's freaking out. Max convinces her it's their only shot at a normal life. Meanwhile, Kaya and Nowak are on the case. They trace Max's purchases back to him, but decide to handle it without the cops. By the time they reach the hideout, Max and Elena are long gone. Heading to the harbor, the couple sneaks onto a ship. Kaya and Nowak aren't far behind, roping in the police this time. As they sail, Max keeps an eye on Sophie, locked up like cargo. Elena and Max dream of a family, watching others on the ship, but their hopes short-lived. The police are waiting for them in Lithuania, tipped off by a kid who saw something weird on the shore. Thinking on his feet, Max uses a family to dodge the cops. He has the dad under gunpoint, drive their van, pretending to be a delivery guy with a bathtub, where Sophie and Elena are hiding. The cops, suspicious of the nervous driver, wants to check the back. Through a Bluetooth earbud, Max tells the dad to play the nervous card, saying he's scared because it's his first time at gunpoint. The lead cop, not wanting to look bad, lets him slide. The mom follows in her car, Max and the kid hidden in the back. The cops don't suspect a thing and let them through. Later, Max ditches the family, but not before smashing their phones and shooting out a tire. Seeing the baby cry, Elena's guilt hits hard. They drive off, with Sophie still in the tub. Hours later, they stop so Sophie, or rather Marie, can take a break. She claims she's not Sophie but her daughter. Max checks online. Sophie's daughter supposedly died long ago. Marie insists she was kept out of the limelight. Max is not buying it, and back in the tub she goes. But Elena's having doubts. They hole up in an abandoned hotel for the night. Maurice out of the tub, claiming she hates her mom's work, calling it unethical. Elena and Max argue. Even if Marie is telling the truth, she might match Elena's DNA. Elena's disgusted by Max's willingness to use a child. Marie asks for a shower. In the bathroom, she tells Max about Sophie trying to cure her sister, then knocks him out and bolts into the woods. Lost with no signal, she falls into a deep hole. Elena, following the light, finds and helps her out. Back at the hotel, Elena sees Marie has no surgery scars. She's the real deal. Max, still skeptical, insists they need Marie for their future. Things heat up between him and Elena, while Marie, tied up, has no choice but to listen. Meanwhile, Nowak and Kaya are closing in on their location. But before they can act, the Adam group, led by Lilith, busts in. They confirm Marie's identity and take the trio to an abandoned building. Lilith spills the beans. Sophie wanted Elena as a personal age donor. They sent Max to make the deal, but he fell in love with Elena instead. Sophie torch their apartment and off Max's match to force Elena's hand. Lilith's got a twisted test. She hands Elena a gun with one bullet. Kill Marie or herself. Elena can't do it, dropping the gun. Lilith points out the hypocrisy. It's easy to let others do the dirty work. Then, Max's burner phone pings the location of the illegal clinic. Good for six hours. If they want their shot, they'll have to help Lilith take down Sophie. Kaya's team encircles the building, ready for action. Max steps out, bluffing that Adam's crew isn't with them. He lays down the rules. Only Sophie gets in or Elena off Marie. Sophie, looking unnaturally young, agrees to the terms. But Kaya smells a rat, questioning how Max knew Sophie's whereabouts. She figures it's a setup. Chaos erupts. Nowak suddenly shoots Sophie, taking her down. Kaya, quick as lightning, takes out Nowak. Inside, Adam's group unleashes a barrage of bullets at Sophie's team. Max dashes back to the hotel, dodging an explosion and a couple of guards. After a brief scuffle, he subdues a rebel. In the garage, Max, Elena, and Marie are scrambling to escape. Marie pulls a gun on Elena, but it's empty. Betrayed, Elena lashes out, knocking Marie out cold. They peel out in their car, while Kaya uncovers Nowak's double life. He's been with Adam all along. Hours later, Max admits he can't bring himself to harm Marie, not wanting to stoop to Lilith's level. Elena's had it. 
She forces Max out of the car, threatening to end it all. She drives to the illegal clinic, dragging Marie for the procedure. Max, lost and aimless, ends up at a refugee camp, following a bus full of immigrants. Meanwhile, Marie, now wandering the roads, gets picked up by a trucker and reunited with Sophie, who survived the shooting thanks to a bulletproof vest. Kaya throws in the towel, sick of killing for profit. Marie starts aging rapidly, but Sophie, ever the selfish one, won't share her years, promising to find a donor instead. Months later, Max spots Elena on a beach, young and pregnant, with a new man. She doesn't acknowledge him, and Max returns to his life with Adam's group, vowing to take down Sophie and her twisted empire. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button for more action-packed movie recaps. Don't forget to turn on notifications and drop a like to support the channel.